guys, it's Rachel with Be Heal Dog Training. Hope you're all doing well. I've had quite a busy day, that's why I was not able to get on around 2 o'clock and aimed for 8 o'clock and now it's like 8.20 or so. Um, it's been a long day. I've been on the roof of the shed that my dad has been building and was helping him get some roofing done. We're getting ready to put shingles up, so um, that was fun. And uh, just getting a lot of getting a lot of stuff together. I've got two weeks left here in my parents' house before I close on the new house, and then we move into there and get the kids and dogs moved. And so everything's been a little bit crazy. But I am going to do my very best to keep these tips coming daily or as close to that as possible. So today, what I want to talk about is how to. Okay, I think those neighbors' dogs. Sorry. Wasn't sure if I needed to correct my dog there. Um, how to add structure to your feeding routine. So I get a lot of clients that come in who have had zero structure to their feeding routine. I get a lot of people that ask me questions about this. And feeding is a really wonderful opportunity to add structure to your dog's everyday life, everyday routine. And really when we talk structure and routine, any ways that you can add structure throughout just your everyday stuff with your dog, um, the better. The more that you can just integrate structure into their daily lives, the better. So, um, you know, I hear a, a lot of people that will just, they um, free feed and just leave food out, make sure food bowl stays topped off. And I really would advise against that because you want to be regulating your dog's food. You want to regulate the amount of food they're getting every day. Um, and, you know, that's more obvious with dogs who are um, overweight. You definitely want to be giving meals instead of free feeding. But, you know, there's plenty of people that think, oh, my dog is really good at self-regulating. You know, they're, they're not overweight. They're in good weight. So it's probably fine just to leave their bowl out. But the thing is, there are other benefits to having structure to your feeding time and to feeding meals. So what I like to see at feeding time is that first of all the dog is fed meals each day, whether that's two or three meals a day, even if it's only one, usually two or three is going to be better. Um, but I like to have meals and you need to figure out what it is that your dog needs to eat, how much they need to eat depending on what their diet is, um, and divvy that out and then have a set meal time, preferably around the same time every day. Um, and then I also like to see dogs eat in their crates. Um, first of all, it, this is a much bigger deal and a lot more important in a multi-dog household for obvious reasons. There's lots of dogs out there who will get in a fight over food and you'd be surprised, even dogs that have eaten nicely close by each other, you know, for months or years may suddenly get into a fight over food. It happens. Um, and when that happens once, there's always a good chance that that could happen again. So feeding dogs individually in their crates, especially when there's multiple dogs, is important um, to potentially keep from having fights break out over food. Now, even those the dogs that get along great and maybe don't fight about their food, there's lots of dogs, and I've gotten a lot of questions about, oh, my one dog steals the other dog's food, or if my other dog isn't that hungry right now, she'll leave the food and then he comes in and eats the rest. So again, you're able to manage your dog's diet a lot better by having them fed separately in their crate so they can't get to each other's bowls. Um, but even if you only have one dog, again, it comes down to structure when you have a feeding routine rather than just leaving food out and letting the dog graze whenever they want. Um, having a set feeding time is just good for routine for the dog, but also... Um, your dog's eating habits is one of the first signs of potential health problems. So eating and bathroom habits are usually your first clue when something's going wrong. So if your dog um, skips a meal, that may clue you into something going on. Now, that's not to say you need to freak out if your dog skips a meal. My dogs, it is very regular for them to skip a meal here and there. I put their food down, they decide, I don't want breakfast today. And for my particular dogs, I don't worry about that so much. You know, I've got three different dogs and... And um, we'll use Belle and Kronk as an example. Belle, if she skips a meal, I really don't think a whole lot of it because she does that pretty regularly. Kronk, if he skips a meal, <laughs> hi mom. My mom's saying hi. She's sitting in the other room because I'm at her house. Um, but, you know, if Kronk skips a meal, I'm going to pay more attention to that because he almost never does. Um, so if you know your dog's eating habits and they um, miss a meal, then you're going to be a lot more clued into, okay, maybe something's going on and I need to keep an eye on this dog. And then if they skip their next meal, 
you know, it, it just gives you that first sign that something could be wrong. So that's something to take into consideration. Um, and then also just the act of feeding your dog. You can add structure to this. So you would have your dog go into the crate, have them wait politely and quietly for their food, reinforce that. If they're barking or whining, you want to Okay, hopefully I'm still here. It kicked me off for some reason. I'm not sure what that was all about. Um, where were we? So the structure of actually feeding meals. Um, as far as when it's time to feed the dog, kennel them up, have them go into their crate on command, have them wait quietly and politely for their food. If they're whining, barking, you know, pawing at their door, you want to have a correction in place to have the dog stop all the nonsense behavior. And then when you bring their food, I like to have the dog go into and sit I put the bowl down for them. I actually don't even tell the dog sit. It's built into the training and the dog understands that they should be in a sit or lying down, just that they're waiting calmly. Put the food down and teach the dog that they are not supposed to eat until you release them to eat. So you can have your release word of break or okay or whatever word that you've decided releases the dog to eat. Um, and just having anything that you can do in the dog's day like that where the dog has to get your permission to do something is a great way to build leadership. It just tunes the dog into checking in with you and making sure that it's okay before they do things. And the more often that you can promote that just in your daily routine with your dog, the better and the more that's gonna help you. So again, just wanted to give a quick little um, tip today on feeding because there are a lot of people that have not come across this information before and, and when I talk to about it with, with clients in the past, it's, you know, I've seen a lot of light bulbs go off. So. Um, if you are not feeding your dog on a schedule and if you don't have any structure to it, start implementing structure and it's just one more way that you can add that into your day. So I'm going to head back out. I've got kids that I've got to get ready for bed. So I hope you guys are doing well and I will check back in with you tomorrow with another tip.